In this video, you'll learn about refrigerated cargo loading procedures. The way cargo is loaded into the trailer can and does have a significant effect on product quality and when loaded properly, helps ensure quality is maintained throughout its journey. The topics we'll discuss in this video include pre-cooling the trailer, being present while loading, product temperatures, trailer airflow, along with loading patterns and securing the load. The first important step in preparing to load refrigerated cargo is being sure the trailer is clean and pre-cooled. To ensure you will not have any issues when checking into the shipper, you should always follow these simple steps. First, be sure the trailer is clean and you can show proof of an approved trailer washout. Second, be sure the trailer floor as well as the return air are both clear of any loose debris such as shrink wrap, cardboard, and even pieces of pallets. Loose debris restricts airflow within the trailer and can also be drawn into the air intake causing the unit to malfunction. Next, you will want to run the refrigeration unit on high speed cool for at least 20 minutes. Once complete, perform a manual pre-trip to be sure there won't be any issues before loading any cargo. Set the unit to the desired temperature and select the proper operating mode, start stop or continuous. Once changing, always double check the settings to ensure it was set properly in order to prevent any cargo damage that can result from an improperly set temperature or run cycle. Remember that any fresh or chilled load that requires tight temperature control or continuous airflow should be ran on continuous run. Running such products on cycle sentry, also known as stop start, can result in hot spots and even top freezing. Refer to your dispatch instructions for additional temperature information or cycle settings. Pre-cooling the trailer removes any residual heat from the trailer's floor, walls, and ceiling before cargo is loaded and increases the likelihood the desired temperature is maintained throughout the transit time. Making sure the product temps are correct before loading begins is very important. Remember, refrigerated transport is designed to maintain temperature not reduce or increase the actual product temperatures. In order to confirm product temperatures, you must always be present while loading. Remember, when you're signing the bills, you are agreeing to the load count and the condition. Before loading begins, be sure to get product temperatures from different pallets from throughout the load. Make note of those temperatures so you can later write them on the bills before signing. Inspect the product for any quality issues while getting temperatures. You may also want to be looking for any damaged pallets as well as packaging that may be damaged. Finally, be sure that each pallet is properly stacked and secure. If you see any issue with the quality of the product or how it is being loaded, you must call dispatch right away. As we all know, some shippers may not allow you on the dock before or while loading. If you are not allowed on the dock to inspect product, you must call dispatch before any cargo is loaded. Once dispatch is aware and you are cleared to get loaded, you will want to be sure to notate it on the bills before signing. The best notations you can make are driver not present prior nor while loading. Shipper is liable for count and condition. Again, write the notation on the bills before signing so it is on all copies. As previously mentioned, you must always get product temperatures before loading any cargo. If the shipper does not allow you to personally get those temperatures, you can request they take temperatures while you witness it and notate accordingly. Do not go by what they said it was. You want to witness temperatures. If they refuse, call dispatch. If the product is more than 3 degrees higher or lower, you must also call dispatch. Always notate product temperatures on the bills before signing. Depending on how cargo is loaded will determine the airflow within the trailer. Loading patterns and spacing is very important. Airflow is priority when loading any refrigerated cargo. Poor air distribution is the primary cause of product deterioration. Making sure the product is clear of any obstructions or debris such as plastic or pieces of broken pallets can result in hot spots within the load and cause the unit to short cycle. All refrigerated loads require at least one to two inches of space between the product and sidewalls. 
The product should never touch the chute and be at least nine inches from the ceiling throughout. Lastly, product should not be loaded within eight inches of the rear doors. Here are a few examples of products being loaded incorrectly and correctly. As you can see in the left picture, the cargo is loaded too high. When the chute is pushed up at any location, it does not allow the air to flow to the rear of the trailer, causing hot spots and possibly the unit to short cycle. The middle picture is loaded to the correct height, but is loaded against both walls. Product should be at least one to two inches away from each wall in order to prevent the product from absorbing heat through the walls and causing damage. The picture to the right is loaded perfectly. The load is not touching the chute, is at least nine inches from the ceiling throughout the load, and is at least one to two inches away from each wall. In the upcoming slides, we will discuss the different loading patterns, as well as what is needed in order to properly secure the load. You will want to watch for spacing, not only for airflow, but also to ensure that there are no spaces or gaps that would allow product to shift and fall. You also want to make sure that there are no loose packages on top of the palletized products, nor on the floor. The following is true for even multi-stop deliveries. After making a delivery, be sure that all pallets are in a position in which that you can secure them before departing. If there is a single pallet at the tail of the load, be sure it is to one side or the other and secure it accordingly. Shippers use mitting loading patterns. You'll want to make sure that the shipper isn't loading pallets in a fashion that could cause you a claim. Standard pallets are 40 by 48. The illustration on the left shows pallets being loaded in a straight or also known as a narrow pattern. Many shippers attempt to load straight as they can load much faster. But loading straight can and will leave an 18 to 22 inch gap which allows pallets to shift and fall while in transit. If a shipper will only load in a straight pattern you may request airbags to be placed to secure and prevent the load from shifting side to side while in transit. You will also want to use at least two load locks at the rear of the load. This illustration shows pallets being loaded in a turned or sideways pattern. This is primarily used for dry loads. The load is very secure side to side but will still require two load locks at the rear of the load. Here we see a weight distribution load pattern, also called distributing weight. This is used when weight is a higher concern versus the actual space required. If a shipper loads in this pattern, be sure they secure the single row of pallets so they do not shift side to side. Again, at least two load locks are required. And finally, here we see the pinwheeled or chimney stacked pattern. This is the ideal pattern for any refrigerated load. It allows for maximum airflow and gives additional stability. You can request a shipper to load in a pinwheeled pattern. Again, at least two load locks are required at the rear of the load. Here are a few examples of cargo being loaded but not secured properly. Both pictures above show pallets being loaded in a straight pattern. In the top picture, the operator didn't request any support or airbags to be placed between the product and the sidewall. While in transit, the product shifted and started to collapse. The bottom picture shows a straight load also, but was loaded along the walls with the space being in the middle. Again, product shifted and began to collapse while in transit. Always request pallets to be secured with bracing or airbags. Both of these incidences could have been prevented, yet ended up costing time and money. The top picture is another straight load. The shipper did put airbags between the pallets filling the gaps. Sadly, the operator didn't use his load locks and the right rear pallet fell backward while in transit, causing a claim. The bottom picture shows a distributing weight pattern. The single pallet shifted after the row at the rear shifted two pallets started to fall and collapsed while in transit. The lumper service did offload the right rear pallet, but then refused to unload the rest until the driver had it restacked. Again, more time and money wasted. Booker's first and last line of defense against any cargo claim is you, the operator. 
the procedures we've gone over can and will prevent most claims, which cost all of us time and money. As we've just seen, several factors associated with proper loading procedures play an important role in helping to keep cargo protected during transit. Adhering to these procedures will help keep the cargo in good quality condition throughout its journey. Clean and pre-cool the trailer. Always confirm product is within three degrees of the desired temperature. While inspecting the cargo, check quality and condition of the product, the pallets, and the packaging. Remember that if you are not allowed on the dock, you must call dispatch. Double check your temperature and cycle settings and confirm with dispatch if there is any differences on the bills versus your trip information. Following these procedures will help ensure you consistently deliver quality cargo to your destination time and time again.